which is why everyone must be engaged. Uh, Benny, you see Christian Woods over here about the up front. that the congressional district 
the people who vote for a congressional district from a county must all be from the same county. In other words, if the county is in two or three different congressional districts, they get together and decide which congressional district they want to be, and that governs where they vote. Okay? That being the ruling of the chair, procedurally, that ruling can be uh, appealed to the uh, state committee, which is where we are now. So is there, there's a motion for appeal. The motion is, does not need a second. Uh, it is uh, debatable, and I think we are allocating like five minutes for a debate. And then we will call for a vote from the uh, committee. So let's and again, this is not something that I think it's got to be something that makes sense. I think the recommendation that we had did that you buy all to make those sense to prioritize this conversation. And I think that job is what the motion that you would like to, or the appeal that you would like to make. Go ahead. Uh, my motion is simply that the congressional, each congressional district chair, be elected by those state committee members who live and vote in the congressional district and no one else. Yeah. Now, uh, I understand that the problem is essentially when we elect our, our, our state committee members, the vast majority of them, that, um, that yes, they're not elected with regard to state, you know, to uh, to state to congressional districts. There is a certain random element in the sense of how many people in a county become state committee members and then end up in a particular congressional district. But I think we have to look at it the other way around. First of all, one of the things that a congressional uh, district chair is supposed to do if they have a Democratic uh, congressperson in particular is represent that person. So it would seem that the logical alignment would be to have the people in the congressional district do it. So for instance, to pick the six uh, as an example, to have people in the 13th congressional district and in the 12th congressional, or excuse me, 11th, who happen to live in Cobb, be electing the 6th district congressional chair, while people who do live in Fulton and in DeKalb are excluded from that vote is a little funny, especially if some of those people worked hard for the con for that congressperson. It could even end up that the congressperson themselves could not vote, even though they are a member. Um, I I think that probably probably just about says it all. I think, and the other thing that I, I think we should say is what the what the bylaws say are very clear. The bylaws say it is those state committee members who live in the congressional district. Now, to be fair, and to be fair to Mike, there's a little distance in the charter which is supreme. It says representatives of that district. Maybe that gives you leeway except for one thing, and that's because the bylaws are intended to refine the charter, to flesh it out, and unless they are in conflict with the charter, then there, uh, there should be no problem. So who represents the district better than the people who live in the district who are on the state committee? I don't see how that could be a conflict with the charter. If it's not in conflict with the charter, what our current bylaws, Whatever we might want our bylaws to say, what our current enforced bylaws say is the people who are state committee members living in the congressional district, voting in the congressional district, and only those people uh, shall uh, vote for the congressional district chair. Chair, I second that motion. Okay. Now, now let me tell you a little procedure. Since I, I just think the way the mechanics of this would work, if this is the ruling by our legal counsel, certainly the chair would have to take that position. If it's on appeal from that, then I'm not supposed to preside, but I'm no longer chair. <laughs> so this would actually be on the chemo now, 
So since she probably does, she would have to take herself off of this. If she would like me to continue the appeal vote, I'll be glad to go ahead and do it. I know you were visiting, so come up here. There's also, that if there's an appeal from a chair's ruling, then the chair cannot preside over that vote, which would now be you. So if you would like me to continue I just want to get all the mechanics right. Okay. Does that follow the right proceed? Carter, help me out if you please. All right. The motion is by John Sawyer and Sector, then we'll take discussion, is that the election of congressional chairs will be made by those who live in the congressional district. Is that my understanding of John of your motion? And that has been said. Okay, any discussion now? First here, then no. go ahead. If the congressional district changes, the boundary will change because of the census, do we have to have a re-election that a body that includes the new yes. boundary, the new borders? Okay, next year is the census. Ten million. Now, it's 2021 census. I can stop it. Right. Can you come to the mic? Go to the mic! <laughs> We had a chance to clarify this last summer. I was there, didn't have the form we needed. This was sent out all to us by, by our emails explaining how this would be done today. And to put it bluntly, this is being pushed because we have a potential race in the 6th District. No, I, I, I'll have my say, all right? And my point here is, we're, we're playing with the rules right here at the end of the day of the election. And we were told how this was going to operate today. We need to keep it as, in my opinion, the decision has been offered up and by the chair. And maybe we all ought to get together and do the bylaws the way we should have done earlier so we don't have this confusion. So when we come to meetings, what we're told is what we've been told is correct. And we just need to follow through for what we're doing. So, I would ask you, let's deal with this at our next meeting and adopt the bylaws and correct this and not do this on the fly here today. I'm telling that's I'm just saying that. I think we were told it was a certain way. That's the way we should do it. And I think a lot of us are ready to go home. Too. You know? So that's that's my say on that. I'll step away. Hi, my name is Helen Willis. Stoner, if this, if you were going to change the rules, at the end of the day, I stayed here the entire day. How many of us live in 13? And we have been assigned to Congressional District 5 for four years. Now, if the rules were going to change, I could have gone home a long time ago because there's no opposition in 13. So, I agree with Mr. Stoner. I feel that if you're going to change the rules, do it the next state committee meeting and assign us where we're supposed to start based on where we live and then let us vote how we were told that we were going to vote today because we've been here, I've been here the entire day since 9 o'clock and it's unfair to tell me that I can't vote now. I just wanted to say it's my understanding of parliamentary procedure um, that we cannot, because it's convenient to counterman what the bylaws state, and by my reading of the bylaws, the state committee members who reside in the congressional districts where they do, they should be voting there. And just because we, we establish an election procedure um, that countermands those bylaws doesn't mean we can just do it. 
I, I'm fairly certain that parliamentary procedure requires us to follow the bylaws, whether or not that we like them. And there are notification periods and bylaws change requirements in order to change these requirements. I don't think that we can just do this willy-nilly. I don't think it will stand. And because the procedures that were sent out were, in my opinion, um, wrong with regards to the bylaws, I'm not even sure that we should be voting on congressional district chairs tonight. The rest of my case. Right. A couple of things. On the treasurer's race, I'm going to go ahead and start counting the ballots on that. And the observers need to go ahead, and I need to make one announcement so we can come back to this discussion. There, uh, we're going to, there's a runoff in the secretary's race. Um, the, there were four abstentions. Uh, there were 219 votes. But it's told you would need 111 to win. Joy Trainer is 45. Ruth uh, Deminger is 70. Justin and Holson back 100. So, what you do is you would drop Joy Trainer and there would be a runoff between Ruth and Justin. Uh, I think the way we would have to do the ballot is you would have to write in one of the names. Is that correct? So the ballots are not, you didn't have a ballot for that reason. So, we're going to, um, you gotta go over to it would be better to go ahead and have that to turn off uh, ballot made first, and then let's come back to the discussion on this one, okay? So, with that, you know, like, how about counting out the ballot first? <laughs> Or something to write it down. Y'all give me just a minute. Justin, do we have that? Okay. If each of the congressional chairs picked up the ballot, and each of the members would need to write one or two names on the ballot, you also have to put your county, you also have to print your name, you also have to sign the ballot. Please don't have any spoil. Write one of these two names down, put your county, put your, put your, print your name, give your signature, okay? <laughs> names they're on the screen to help you be able to spell them.